Hello, hello, hello. Thank you so much for coming in today. We greatly appreciate you coming in and talking to us. We have a spe very special guest with us here today, Megan, and she's going to be talking about her new book. So just to start off, can you give like our listeners who haven't read your book or really heard too much about it a little synopsis of it? Sure. Uh, it's about a mind reader boy who finds out he has other magical powers. Uh, the entire world, which is the name of the series, the Naga M Chronicles, which is my name spelled backwards. Um, <laughs> clever. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. Um, anything that's not doesn't look like English in this book, basically, you can rearrange the letters and you'll find an actual English word. Um, yeah, so it's like a little trivia game inside the book, but um, it's basically about this fantasy world where fairies stare at fairies and mind readers stare at mind readers. And so my main character can now turn into a mermaid and do these fairy power things. It's obviously not normal. So he's got a, he's only 14 years old and he's a little awkward and he's, you know, kind of going to high school, that whole phase that we all dreaded at one point. <laughs> and uh, he's like, no, 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 this can't happen. And so he goes on this little adventure and it's going to take over the course of four books. So I've got three more coming up. Oh. Yes. And I have a second one in the process of writing, which has been a lot of fun to do. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I've been pretty busy since I graduated in May. Um, it's been also 10 years actually since I've been writing this book. I was 11. Wow. Yes. I was actually just going to ask like when did you get the inspiration to write the book? Like how serious, like how long has it been like a goal of yours to actually have it published? Well, I've always wa loved to write. Uh, I was actually, believe it or not, I was a terrible student. I just <laughs> couldn't pass a test for the life of me. But what's wonderful is that in my English classes that I was able to write essays and I could write phenomenally always. And so I always had that strength. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember vividly the day I actually came up with the story. Um, I had just learned I had scoliosis, which is an abnormal curve in the spine, and I had to wear a medical brace for three years. And you know, when you're in eighth grade and you're like, that just sucks. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember this summer going into eighth grade, I was just bored out of my mind because I'm stuck in this stupid brace. I couldn't go in the pool and I couldn't help my friends, and it was terrible. And of course, I'm reading and reading and reading because I'm nothing else to do. And I stared out my wind bedroom window and I just saw this blonde haired, purple eyed boy who I knew was a mind reader and his name was Jimmy and he was gonna save the world and also go on a magical adventure. It was a really awesome experience. Oh, that's so sweet. So do you yeah. have any authors that you read at that time that inspired you to kind of, that influenced your writing style or inspired the story at all? I do actually. Um, well, the time I wrote the book was the last time the last Harry Potter movie came out. So JK Rowling was a big, you know, role in this obviously and you'll probably see it in the books too if you guys read it which I would greatly appreciate. <laughs> of course. Uh, thank you. Um, and I also know uh, Rick Riordan's Percy Jackson series at the time was something really close to my heart and oh, yeah. um, just by that time I also started reading classics because I was my teacher tested me and I was a um, way advanced my reading level so she actually gave me when I was starting eighth grade she started giving me Jane Austen and Louisa May Alcott because I was bored of reading what average eighth graders could read. I was much more advanced. I was at a high school level already. And then when I got to high school, I was already at a collegiate level and I was, my teachers probably hated me <laughs> <laughs> in high school because I was just so, you know, I was just so into it and I was so advanced for my age. It was, you know, it was a little lonely experience, I'll be honest about it, because, um, you know, you're so advanced from everybody and everybody just, your own friends come to you to for tutoring. Uh, which is great because when I did come to college, I was a writing tutor. So. I know that's the first time <laughs> I met you. I know that's I why met I you like, in yes. our class in my class freshman year, and we talked about Brendan Urie and Panic yes. at the Disco. <laughs> yes. Oh, if you want to talk about music that inspired this book, a lot of it did. And of oh, course, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. I definitely think so because um, you know I was always surrounded by music and books because it always kept me company during you know a lonely time with medical brace on in the summer and stuff like that. And I was a dorky kid in high school. I'll be, I'll admit I think to we it. all were. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's true. But, you know, I always like to just submit it because, you know, can't hurt mm -hmm. now at least. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I definitely think that um, anything Brendan Yuri writes is always kind of like, yeah, I didn't relate to it, but it was just so beautiful that I just loved it and I would love to write something like that. You yeah, know? especially his earlier albums kind of have that fantasy feeling like mm -hmm. the creepy piano intros and bridges and outros and stuff yes. like that are very yeah they definitely set kind of a, a mood that yes. I feel like we're getting here <laughs> yes and especially when you're like an edgy teenager going through puberty you know you just you just need it you know yes. yeah so <laughs> oh that's amazing yeah. so how long did it take you to get to the point where you looked at your novel and said it's done oof um, it's a long one because um, I actually finished writing the last chapter of the book right here at Wagner College. 
No wow. joke. I was the second. It was the first week of my second semester. I got to school early, and I was like, "All right, I got nothing else to do." So I went to the library, and I just sat there and I was just doodling. And then, boom! I just wrote the chapter, and I just texted everyone I know, <laughs> saying that I wrote, the, finished the book, and they said, "Okay, when's it becoming a movie?" And I was like, "Thank you, I, I think." <laughs> <laughs> and um, what I did, obviously did then is then spent my sophomore, junior, and senior year editing. And well, it's actually once I was about to graduate, I finished, and I was looking. Actually, I'm sorry. My timeline's a little murky because, you know, it's been so long yeah. <laughs> that it kind of just blurs in your brain. Um, I think I want to say by the end of my junior year, I was looking at literary agents, but and then I opted out for Amazon, which is more like an independently published. So yeah. I think I want to say towards the end of junior year, beginning of senior year was the time I really started thinking I was done. And I started really writing the second book, which was fun. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So because you were writing it for so long, I'm just curious because, like, I love creative writing, but mm -hmm. I don't think I'll ever have, like, the organization skills or anything to kind of compile all of these stories into what I would hope to be something like what you've written. Do you have, like, any, like, how did you just compile, did you write it in order or did you, like, write bits and pieces of it over time? How? Did, what was your writing process like? Well, I was so young when I started, so I really didn't know how to write a book. So <laughs> when I started, I was like, okay, beginning, middle, end, can't be that hard. Um, it's n it's exceptionally hard. So I don't totally recommend it, even though I'm now used to the habit of writing beginning, middle, end. Um, so the complicated part is that I was learning how to write. So a lot of it started that way, and then I sort of figured it out. And like some of it is like, oh, well, I just started at the beginning. It can't work from the end now. I don't know what to do. Um, so really, I my advice to you as a writer is, you know, you don't need a, something set in stone. You can always change your writing style. You can always change how you approach writing. It's never set in stone. And so have fun with it. Don't ever stress that, you know, because one way of working is not working. That doesn't mean you're a bar bad writer. That doesn't mean you have writer's block. Sometimes it just means, you know, you need to try something new. Aww, yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. cute. Thank you. So yeah. you mentioned that you kind of finished off the book while you were in the Wagner College Library. Yes. Um, was that, was the library like a place that you liked to write? Was it your bedroom? Like, was there any kind of environment that put you in the most motivational, comfy mindset to write? Um, well, I think what, the library here was just something, I just lived here because I was a writing tutor and um, I was a dork. I just needed to be surrounded by books at all times. So anytime I had free time here, you would never find me in the dorms hanging with my friends. You'd actually find me in the library, making friends with the librarians. Shout out to Mary. She's my girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, so I, I find it really special that I did finish it here. And it kind of felt like, you know, I started the book in eighth grade and now I was in high school, in college. I feel like I could just grow up with the story. It's one thing to grow up with the character that you read, but it's another one when you write the character. It's, it's really awesome. Um, but to answer your question, I think the most, besides Wagner, I, it's hard because um, I get inspired no matter where I'm going. It's really great because iPhones are wonderful in the way that they can just pull out notes and you can start writing. Um, I always carry my notebook with me. It's actually, the second book is actually in my bag if you all want to take a look. Ooh, <laughs> sort of, not really. It's just notes and in my illegible handwriting. So, <laughs> and we're there's really no set place. I think right now, I, if, because it's not Wagner. Um, it's actually my home office, which is like a walk-in closet in my attic. It's a real, real Joe March-like, yeah. which is amazing <laughs> because it's covered in books. Everything's dusty, and I'm a mess oh. up there usually, so it's great. It sounds like a really nice aesthetic to write, like a like a fantasy type novel. <laughs> it is until you see a cre creepy spider at two o'clock in the morning, and I'm like, oh, I know. You get that at Wagner. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but still, do you enjoy doing it? No, so yeah. you know. <laughs> Do you yeah. work better, like, writing, like, during the day or at night? Like, just out of curiosity. Oh, um, strange. Um, when I was younger, definitely at, during the, at night and during the day, like, all days, every day. Um, now it's at night mostly or really early in the morning. Um, uh, my days start at, uh, my alarm goes off at 5 o'clock in the morning and I don't go to bed till 2. Oh, wow. So I don't, seven days a week, adulting sucks. <laughs> <laughs> um... So it's really, it's really early, early in the morning or at night, or I will wake up in the middle of the night and write my book. Um, I can't nap in someone's house because they got to make sure I don't wake up and start looking. And if I don't have a notebook near me, I go like into a panic. So Aww. yeah, it's ter it's it's kind of cute, I guess. <laughs> at least we know that you're passionate <laughs> about it. Yeah, yeah. And you never know when like inspiration's gonna hit you. It can be in the middle of the night and dream, and you're like, that that's going in the book. Exactly. Like, um, um, I just know I actually keep a notebook next to my bed at all times even when I'm on vacation I keep it with me because and everybody thinks I'm crazy but like maybe I am um, <laughs> because I literally will wake up in the morning and as I'm making my bed I'll just see 
I'm like seeing this piece of paper with scribble on it. And I'm like, oh, good to know. <laughs> I'm gonna figure out what that me- what that says, and then I'm gonna put it in the book. It sounds like fun. So do you ever like so because you wrote the book kind of in chronological order? Did you like ever surprise yourself and you were like, oh, I didn't realize that was gonna take a turn, or oh, I found this random piece of paper with the biggest plot twist I've ever heard of? Like, did you ever have a kind of like, oh, I did that moment? I actually did, and there was actually two when I was writing. There was two when I was writing in college. I was editing, and I just felt like the plot was sort of stagnant, so I kind of feel like I needed to spice it up. Mm-hmm. And so I actually put a nice, interesting plot twist in the book that I think most kids would find relatable. My own illustrator, when he read the book, said that it was the most relatable part of the book. And oh, I was wow. like, great, cool, I did my job. And then another one, I just, out of nowhere, I just decided to add in some characters, and then I put them in the whole series at, in the end of the day. So that was the most stressful part of editing, actually, was just adding these pieces of the book that came out of nowhere after so many years of them not being in there and I was like you couldn't come sooner but I don't regret it now. (laughs) Did you always know that it was going to be more than just one book? Yes I did. Reason being is because I built the world first before I built the characters and so I had so much knowledge like I actually know how they do their taxes because I had I just needed to know okay (laughs) don't you? Like no you created a whole universe that's like it's like a place for you to live in that's its own separate world but it's our world. Like, yeah. Exactly. Like you can. Not, what's beautiful about it is that it's so unrelatable in a way that it is relatable. Like you can al- always inter. You always understand something emotionally with these characters, mm-hmm. and you can kind of understand like you know how they live. And I think that's very important when you write fantasies. You want it to be an escape from reality because reality is just terrible. We all know it. Yeah. I yes. hate to sound like a bummer, but you know. No, yes. but that's what books are for. They're escape from reality. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So I just, I think it's very, it's very important that you do write something when you write something so big like that you just I don't know how do you write one book like I don't know that just bothers me (laughs) so that kind of reminds me because Cassandra Clare is one of my favorite authors oh mine too and what she's done is she's kind of created this whole world and it's kind of I don't say this is a bad thing but it's kind of all she writes because it's she's so immersed in this universe that she's created and she loves it so much so if you do decide to make more books out of this four book series are they going to be related to this universe or are they going to be like are you going to experiment with other things like what direction can you see yourself going in well i actually am currently wait for this writing 14 books that includes the four books (laughs) that includes the 14 so i have a six book series that's going to most likely end up being like a first children like a chapter first chapter book for kids and it's going to just follow these two two magic they're not magical creatures but they're prince and princess that you know have to go save a dragon and things like that oh and my it, god that yeah. sounds so sweet though <laughs> it is i'm very excited to write them and then i have one edgy teenage novel that's coming out that's a sci-fi book Hilarious. and i think that's all of them if that count I, yeah maybe that's no there's more <laughs> like, there's maybe okay. more i lose track quickly because like they're all like it's funny like when i mentioned earlier when i fall asleep writing like sometimes i'll wake up and it's like i'll I'm writing about a character who I've written about in years, but I'm still in the process of writing that book. But you know, the, the Nagaim Chronicles is obviously taking my priority. Right. So it's it's nice, and every once in a while they surprise me and come visit. In my tr- so it's it's so sweet. Do you have like a not a favorite character? Because that's like asking you to pick like a favorite yeah. child. But do you have like a character that like holds a really special place in your heart? Definitely my main character Jimmy because he's the first one I created, and I relate to him so much. And, even now, actually, when I read the book myself, um, he was just someone I understood, and he understood me, and it's it's very nice to write him, because I always know what's going on in his head, and I always kind of think, like, you know, if he was actually here in this room, what would he think? What would he do? And stuff like that, because I, I just know he's, like, that best friend that, you know, I don't know, if that makes any sense. It makes <laughs> a lot of sense. Oh, good. <laughs> I was wondering if your characters are based on pe- people you know, or, like, experiences you've had with people that you've met in your lifetime, and how they've kind of impacted you. I think they do, actually, because, you know, I grew up with this story, so obviously, you know, friendships that faded or something like that is very present here, Mm -hmm. and it's nice because I don't actually know directly. Um, I know some characters, they may seem like a lot of my family members think they all are in there because they're all, there's a character, like, um, my main character, Jimmy, I have an Uncle Jimmy, so he's convinced that (laughs) he's he's the character, and I'm like, "I, I hate to break it to you, but no, he's not. But it's a nice, but you know, what's nice is that I have these just strong relationships with the family and friends that I think they're so well written in this book. And I think that's why anyone would enjoy reading this book is that it's really about the bonds between family and friends and that's what, when you're growing up, that what you, what it means to love a friend and what it means to love a parent or a cousin. And I think that's something anyone can relate to. And so I really look forward to fans reading that. If I have I've fans. also <laughs> noticed that like 
your family and your friends have been so supportive of you during this process with yes. the Instagram posts and everything. And I love the fact that you're able to have this supportive background mm -hmm. to help you get to experience this wonderful thing of writing a book. Like that's a huge feat. And Thank you. Amazing. <laughs> Thank you very much. Especially like having you come talk with us. Oh yeah, no problem. <laughs> oh no, definitely. It's really, it, it is amazing. Cause like I said earlier, like seeing how you started this so young and you kind of made it, you actually made it into something because so many people I know, like they have stories in their heads and they could be, or they're amazing writers, but they don't, they don't have that like push to make it actually happen. And it's amazing to see somebody who works, that it seems like you worked really hard on it. So it's amazing to see that hard work pay off and receive such like positive feedback. It was a nice feeling. Like I was, when I was younger, my, no one really believed me like, in a way. They were like, oh, you're writing a book. That's great. But I was also 11, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I was like, yeah, that's great, Megan. Yeah. And then, you know, I'm so, I'm 16 then. And then I'm like, oh, I'm still writing that book. And they're like, really? And then by the time I'm 20, they're like, is it published yet? Like I'm confused. But what's wonderful is that they just never stop caring, and you know that's a wonderful feeling. And I know my my family was the first people to buy the book, first people to read it, and so it's a very special feeling. You know, I grew up in a very wonderful household and a, with a huge family, and you know I always had a lot of great friends who are now like basically my cousins because I'm so close with them. Aww. And it just is such a wonderful feeling, and you know basically the books about them and how much I love and appreciate them and. If you go read the acknowledgments, it's just me like bleeding my heart out about Aww. how much I appreciate them because so it's cute. so sweet, you know. Like, mm -hmm. I was very fortunate like that. Was <laughs> there anybody here at Wagner, any professors or anyone that kind of pushed you in the right direction or kind of like that you were trusted to read any versions of your novel? It's fine if that's not true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think I had like a tremendous amount of support because by the time I finished the first book and I was reading the second one, like I was already my wheels were already turning. So when I got here, so when I was telling people I was writing a book and stuff, everybody was super surprised. Like they're like Megan, like really? Like do you sleep? That was I think everybody's questions, even my professors, mm -hmm. and um, they were more like supportive of everything. So it was a really great feeling that you know when I got here that I still had that same support even though it was just you know late in the game, but. That doesn't matter how late in the game or how early you're in the game. It was just great to have it. <laughs> so we have a question that we've been asking everyone we've interviewed. We're going to modify it a little bit for this sure. one. What is your opinion on ghostwriting? Ghostwriting. Hmm. If it's necessary, it's necessary, I guess. Um, you know, a lot of celebrities who have, like, amazing stories, maybe they can't, their strength isn't writing. I can understand why they would hire a ghostwriter. Mm -hmm. But if you do have the ability to write, I can understand. I'd say why hire a ghostwriter. So that's where my stance is makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I was also wondering uh, if you had to pick between two important aspects of a novel, either focusing more on character development or focusing more on description, what would you say is your go-to? Like, Ooh, um, I love character development. Um, I, they like to, I love when my characters surprise me. There's a ca couple characters in this book that surprise me. Um, even when I read the book still, I'm like, wow, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> Go me. Um, yeah. <laughs> so it's like more character driven you feel? Definitely, because this is written in Jimmy's point of view. It's written present intense, and um, you're, he's living with you. You're dealing with him day to day. So I think, you know, learning how he grows up and stuff is good. Is there anybody you hope will, like, read this book? Like, any, like, kind of kid in particular or teen in particular that you would, like, want to have the story and hear the story, like, for their life or what they're currently going through? Um, I would just love to anyone to read it and enjoy <laughs> it, to be honest. But I think I would love to have, you know, a kid who's a kid, teenager, anyone who's going through something and just be able to pick up this book and just being like, yeah, I remember those days when I was that awkward teenager or, you know what, I am that awkward teenager and you know what, this kid got through it, I can get through it, even though he's fictional, like just some sort of like love and support. I think that relates so much to the fact that this is the point of view of Jimmy and you're kind of living with him. Mm -hmm. So even though like we're older, but reading this book, it's going to be like, oh, wait, either uh, this happened to me or I've seen this happen or I've went through this or I have dealt with this and I think that's such a great way to write a novel in a sense Thank you. because it's this you're forming this connection with readers that people hope to have in their lifetime like this could be a book that some kid reads one day and goes wow this kind of changed my life yeah, yeah I can definitely kind of seeing it have that Harry Potter impact on a kid just yeah. like from like how you're describing it and what I've read about it 
like I, I I just feel like I feel like it definitely has that potential to be kind of like oh, thank that you. inspirational kid story that we oh, all need. Thank you, you guys are so sweet. I hope it is because you know what? When I was eleven, he was fourteen, so he was older than me. Then when I finished the book, I was tw- I was oh, no, I'm nineteen, and he was still fourteen, and so I was much <laughs> older than him and wiser. And so I went I went through things in life that he was going to go through. So I felt and then got to a point when I was living with him at 14 he was 14 and I knew what he was going through and I felt like it was just genuine and then when it got to the point when I was older it was more like nostalgia so I was able to write both things at once which was so much fun to write and I think it was probably my favorite part to write was just all my rewrites was as stressful as it was it just helped me you know be more nostalgic of my own life and his and everything in between I actually have kind of a funny question was there any like favorite snack or drink that Mm. you would have while you wrote okay so um, I'm always trying to be healthy, so I'm always drinking water. That's my little fake hydro flask over there. <laughs> <laughs> um, not a visco girl, though. Um, and I love peanut butter and I love pretzels, even both at the same time. It's a little bit of a dry snack, but, you know, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, like, what's Jimmy's favorite snack? Jimmy's favorite snack it happens to be bacon drenched in maple syrup. Oh, so he's not trying to be healthy. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, no. <laughs> so I'm trying to be healthy, but so he's got to have the junk junk food for me. Him and his friends love picking out. You guys actually <laughs> seen in the book where they're all like just shot from like life because you know they're going through some stuff mm-hmm. and they're like guys do you want to order hamburgers and fries and they're like yes please <laughs> and they're just sitting in their hangout room kind of like a room like this a little bigger and just eating and just picking out and just living and I'm like so jealous of them definitely but it's fine. sounds relatable to college life not right? just kids <laughs> right so that's definitely yeah. super true and I love the fact that there's this relatability factor yeah, like, thank and you. I love how passionate you are oh, about thank this book you. I know thank you me. can really tell like as you're talking to us about it because you are working like a full-time job yes, you got I that am. post-grad glow going oh, on thank you like <laughs> so you literally walked in here and it was like wow oh, thank you so like, much honestly so it's it's really amazing to see you still this passionate about something yes. for after so long right it's like I get, it's actually kind of sad I was thinking about it recently is that my brother is now seven years is seven years younger than me so obviously when he was born I was seven and it just dawned on me recently is that like he doesn't remember a time when I wasn't writing this book because I was 11 so like he was still a babylish so like he actually doesn't remember a time when I didn't write this book and to be honest I'm getting old so I'm not remembering that time much much <laughs> So oh, how did he feel when you finally finished it? He was like, oh, you actually finished? I thought you never finished at this point. <laughs> like, he, he's also my little brother. He's going to tease me and, right. you know, yeah. and torture me. So I was like, whatever. It didn't even bother me. So, oh. yeah, it was great. You're from Staten Island, correct? Yes. Okay. Has, was there any inspiration from being on the island that you kind of incorporated into your book? Again, no. it's okay if that answer is no. Oh, no. <laughs> you are going to laugh. You are going to laugh at this one. I'm ready. So, okay. So I'm working on my illustrator one day, and I'm telling him about how I, I have a very specific vision about how the school looks. And he's like, oh, God, okay, here's a piece of paper. You draw it out for me. I don't care how bad your drawing is. I'm like, okay. So I'm just ranting. I'm talking. I'm sketching. And he just stops me. I'm like, what are you doing? He goes, you just drew Wagner College. <laughs> And I'm like, what do you mean I just drew Wagner College? And he's like, do you see that little lake in the middle that's shaped like an oval, Megan? Really? <laughs> really? And then he's like, see the red brick buildings around the oval? Really, Megan? You drew Wagner College. And I was like, are you seriously trying to tell me I drew a magical school based on Wagner College? And he's like, yeah, I think you did. Oh, my gosh. Wait, how did you find an illustrator? Um, well, he's actually a friend of mine, and it was great. A couple of years ago, we were um, sitting at Friendsgiving which is a, tis the season, right, mm-hmm. for this story. And he's sitting there, and he's like, guys, you know what I really want to do one day? And we're like, what? And he's like, I want to illustrate a book. And I, at the time, I didn't tell him I was writing a book. And I was like, oh, you're hired. And he's like, what? <laughs> and he's like, oh, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm in the cr- process of publishing a book, and I obviously need a co- cover, so do you want to just, like, I don't know, draw a cover for me? And he's like, you wrote a book? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, wait, 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 hold on. <laughs> so it took me forever to figure to tell him that I, ha- I was writing a book, you know, yada, yada, yada. And he's like, oh, yeah, sure, whatever. And boom, here we are. <laughs> So d- was working with him, like, less stressful than trying to hunt down, like, somebody else to design the cover of the book? Like, did he, were you guys, like, on the same wavelength? Absolutely, because we're, we've been friends for a while, so when he, he, when he sees me crazy, it's like, great, it's fine, he knows it, it's fine. <laughs> I'm totally fine. <laughs> and, um, it was great because when I didn't like something, he knew, because I'm, I have a very honest face, so if I don't like something, I make a face, and, you know, you know the person who just smiles and goes, it's great! Yeah, yeah. That's me. And so... 
he I didn't have that time to be that with him. I was like, nope, I don't like this, this, that, and that. And he's like, okay, I'll change it. So it was much easier to work with him because I knew him so well. Mm -hmm. And now we actually branched off. He actually has a friend who just graduated Pratt in childhood illustration, so he wants to be a full time illustrator. Oh, wow. So now I'm jump I'm working with him now, and his act. Actually, we're putting an ad in the ad, uh, Santa Island Advance for the book. Ooh, so you'll see the art for that. Yes, I actually have a picture I'll show you guys later oh, but, um, of the sketch of the artwork that we're putting out for the Advance. So definitely, if you guys can get a hand on that in a couple weeks, we can yes. post about it. I'll yes. make the transcript happen. All right. yes. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. <laughs> I promise the transcript will come yes. out. It's just been thesis time. So. Oh, yes, I totally understand. That's why I'm like, don't rush on that. I'm just glad I can be here with you guys. I know. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time to come. No, absolutely. This is great. I also have one other question for yeah, you. Go ahead. Who was the first person to read your book in full? Oof. Um, no one actually has read it from beginning to end yet. Um, I know, right? <laughs> Probably because it came out at the end of September, which is around when time school starts and everything. And obviously, my friends are much older now, and we're all in full time. Nah, most of us have full time jobs. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a little chaotic. Um, but so far, um, I'm trying to think. Oh, yeah. Actually, someone did. I'm not sorry. A little little old <laughs> okay. um my the kids I actually babysat my freshman year of college who actually lived right around the corner from here he was the first one to read my book and he his mom texted me and he was like I never seen the kid read that fast he loved it oh. and I was like oh my god job is done and what's even cuter is that when I used to put him to bed afterwards and I was and she wasn't still home I was like okay I got nothing else to do so and I didn't have my laptop with me so I couldn't write my papers so I pulled out my notebook and I would just write so oh, you that know, is it was the so thing. right. That's so rewarding I to know. have somebody who like you were with for so long. I don't know, just even that like, yeah, that way to for a kid even today, like yeah. to sit and read a book and just to get through it so fast, like enjoy yeah. it so thoroughly, and especially because you knew him and you watched him grow yes. up. Yes, it's even more rewarding. Exactly, and he's actually the age now where he's. I think he's. 12, 13 now. Oh, so, so he's, he's around just, Jimmy's age. Exactly. So I'm like, oh my god, so this kid's now prepared for high school. This is great. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Send him, like, signed copies of the rest of the books. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think I might. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that's so sweet. Yeah, I know. I personally, I've bought the book, but I haven't had a chance to read it yet, so it's just <laughs> like, it is that thesis time. <laughs> I, I guess, yeah, but you know what? It's a great stocking stuffer, so if you want, I actually did check. I pulled out my own stocking to make sure it fit. Oh, so. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, my mom thought it was the stupidest thing ever, but now I'm thinking it's not that stupid because, you know. Because no, you worked that hard to put it in the stocking. Exactly. <laughs> and so it's a great way to share with, like, it's a great gift for kids growing up in that age group. Yeah, like, yeah. what do you put in their stocking at that point, you know? Yeah, like, what do you get a kid at that age because... They probably don't want anything. And, and you yeah, want exactly. them to read, like, obviously. Yeah, exactly. And if you, can, you want to get girly and get me si have me to sign it, I love signing books. So, Aww. yeah. And, oh, yeah. We will definitely put that in our little... Our yeah. little thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always, I work here on the island, so you can always catch me here. So oh, I, don't, I don't work too far, and I'm... Yeah, I don't go too far. I'm always here. <laughs> uh, no, I think... I so good. I want to thank you so much for coming oh, in and talking no, thank to you us. For having me. I was just wondering if you had any last words to our listeners about your book. Um, well, I really enjoy if you guys read it, and um, of course you can always DM the Instagram page if you have any questions about the book, and um, if you want to review it, if you want to tell me you hate it, I don't mind that either. <laughs> you know, it helps me become a better writer, I suppose. And um, for all the, anybody who is a writer or has a passion for writing or has any passions, I seriously believe that if you work hard enough and you dream big and you believe in your dreams that you can do anything. I know that sounds corny and cliche, but um, if anything that I've learned about, you know, starting this whole marketing program for myself and promoting my book is that, you know, everything that anyone has, any of your heroes have ever said about believing in your dreams is all true. That's what I can go take away from, I hope you guys can take away from. Oh, my <laughs> Oh, thank you. I think That's you're so, so sweet. I think you guys are the sweetest people I've ever met. Like, this is oh, great. Like, you guys are, like, long in everything I'm saying, and most people are just like, so oh, my cute. God. Yeah, <laughs> it's so funny, because, like, when I met you, I had no idea that you were yeah. writing a book. I just know that you were amazing. Like, you were so passionate yes. about writing, and I had yes. no idea. And now, like, as soon as I saw that Instagram page, I was like, whoa, yes. this is amazing. Yeah, yeah. It, it's funny, yeah. Um, I just, yeah. yeah. I just remember, like, in, in the writing center, so one thing I definitely miss about Wagner is just working in that writing center, so shout out to uh, Miss Dr. Sabatino for being my boss for so many years. She's wonderful. Um, I just loved being there, and I just loved 
when just working with kids and I also have so much random knowledge because of all the papers I've read <laughs> and I'm like people are like well, how do you know that I'm like I honestly think it's because of the writing center <laughs> oh your thesis because I actually read them I'm not just scanning them for grammar mistakes I actually generally read them and all the nursing students too I remember I was like I can't pronounce half these words but at least I know what they're doing it's okay we can't <laughs> pronounce half the words either <laughs> exactly, but it's, 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 that's what I definitely miss about Wagner College the most is just being in that writing center and just teaching people like writing and you know seeing their strengths and weaknesses it just oh if I can have that again I would <laughs> do it in a heartbeat oh, well Megan thank you so much for coming in today we yeah. appreciate you taking the time to talk yes. to us and thank you and everyone go get her book yes, yes thank do you it. so much <laughs> have a great night everybody thank you You're welcome.